So hallelujah, everyone who's listening to this broadcast, especially Global Revival Church members, let God's grace be upon you. So continuing on from Tuesday, we're going to go a little bit more deeper. So we changed the title a little bit. We're going to talk about Baits of Satan. So in easier words, when you start to understand and recognize who Satan is, you'll know what Satan likes. Then automatically, when those things, symptoms or you know things appear, then you'll become a target in your life. And if you don't respond against it, and your life is going to be destroyed. So because of this, if you clearly know the truth and you respond, and you clearly know what the Satan's position is, then you know who you are, what position you're in, then you can easily deal with the issue. So these areas with the Bible, we have to clearly know. Because the world is being influenced by Satan a lot and there's a lot of confusion and chaos and a lot of lies and deception so many people are deceived right in their lives so through today's word especially in October there's Halloween and the LGBTQ events so all these things that bring confusion to people's thinking the people's direction value system you know deceive all of it shake it so in this time right now that when your eyes are open to God's truth and you can change your perspective into the light so everyone who's listening to this broadcast that God's grace be upon you Amen so as I told you let's read the Bible what are the characteristics of Satan what kind of characteristics does Satan have when you understand this? When you notice, then you can easily understand. So let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 12. Revelation 12, 7 to 12. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. So when you read Revelation chapter 12, there's an interesting word. So there's a war in heaven. And then if you see that, the stars fell. So this could also be kind of Star Wars, right? So there was a heaven, war in heaven. So we cannot know in the flesh, but in the spiritual realm, there was some kind of battle or war. So one side was the dragon, the devil, Satan, and serpent. So God's enemy, so our enemy, the one who tries to destroy us. So there's that force. And then it also says the dragon and his angels or the stars that follow him. So there's angels. And then there's also Michael. So Michael. Michael is an archangel. So the archangel, a very powerful angel, you know, who protects Israel. So they fought together, the dragon and Michael and his angels. So they couldn't stay in heaven any longer and was cast out. They couldn't stay in heaven and was cast out. So let's think about it. What is Satan's actual state right now? He's the one who's been cast out. He's the loser, the defeated one. Do you understand? So you have to understand this picture. He can no longer stay in heaven. He was cast out. 
then those who believe they can go where they can access the heaven right you understand so your position satan's the one who was cast out and then ephesians 2 he couldn't stay in heaven he was cast out where did he come he went to the earth and he is the heir he's the one who deceives the whole world right so all the wireless all the like the bluetooth in that time right now he's ruling reigning the world right now right so who he was so he's the deceiver of the world he's a deceiver of the whole world he's a tempter he deceives tempts where the whole world he has no limit so the world that you belong to he was cast out to this world so the world you belong to right now unless you can discern this you're going to be deceived and you're, it's going to be distorted so you have to understand this picture but when he was in heaven what did he do day and night every opportunity a chance he got he was the accuser of our brethren so to accuse others what does that mean that means arrogance pride judgment and criticism right that's what he was doing so if you know satan's characteristics then judgment criticism control manipulate pride arrogance if you do any of that you're immediately just go into his influence so let's say the storm comes right so how do you know you're in the influence of the storm the wind is strong or it's raining right that's how you know that you're in the midst of the storm right so then even in your life in your life what influence are you living in right now what area are you living in right now when you see that and if you're in the biblical influence or if you're in those influences of satan then you're holding on to his bait so how can you prevent a rat from coming into your home you have to block the hole right but in, even though you block it if there's something to eat he'll the rat will still come in right so these days i do dishes so i leave the food leftovers in the like a, the bag even if i leave a little bit the next day either a gecko comes or a cockroach you know the small cockroach and then cockroach runs away when I try to, you know, kill it. So those things come. So unless you completely get rid of those leftovers, right? The cockroach or gecko is going to still come. So how do they know? How does the gecko know there's food? How do these bugs come knowing there's food? Isn't it very interesting? So when you see those things, so everything that happens in the spiritual realm, this system is similar. So the way you can easily understand who are you? So there's a loud sound in heaven. Who is that? It's the salvation, right? There's the salvation strength, the blood of the Lamb. There's the power and authority of the kingdom of God. So it has been cast down. But if you look at Satan at the end, he had great wrath and he came down to you, right? The earth. So the evil spirits that are around you, they have some kind of anger they're trying to find the one to devour right they're trying to find the one to vent their anger to the evil spirits they had they were filled with great wrath when they came down to earth right because he knows that he has a short time he knows god's appointed time so he knows he doesn't have much time so right now these days there's less time right so then satan's going to even go even more worse right because there's not that much time left so the more you go to the end time it seems calm on the outside but in reality in the behind many of these kind of things are happening right deceiver accuser tempter pride arrogance control manipulate and lying so in those kind of situations you recognize this what state it is in when you know who you are then you can easily overcome so the evil spirits it's not a power game you know the evil spirit devil is going to keep trying to approach you as a power game he, we get deceived that he, we think satan has the same amount of power as god and we treat him the same way we treat god but it's god of peace right so that you crush satan under your feet right so even satan's a creature he corrupted 
So you don't need power. When you just speak the truth, it's over. Because Satan's position is the defeated one, the cast out. He was cast out, kicked out, right? But he's also kind of urgent, right? Because he doesn't have much time. Satan's filled with anger. So for you to easily understand, those who have anger problems, unexpected anger. So not anger that because you kind of got hurt, but suddenly unexpected anger that just comes out of nowhere. Have you ever experienced that? Why did I suddenly, why am I suddenly doing this? Is this for me to be this angry about? And after a while, it seems like nothing, but it, well, you got angry about it, right? That You're going into Satan's influence. So look carefully. So if you go into the eye of the storm, it's calm, right? The center or core of the storm. Over there, it's calm. It's calm, but it's not over. If you go even a little bit out, you hit, hit it, right? So, if you don't know the truth, then suddenly when these things happen, you're going to get deceived. Even though it's calm, you know, Satan might be waiting for another time, you know, another chance. So, you have to, if you understand the spiritual picture, then no matter what comes, in your position, you use the authority that was given to you, then you can become like Jesus. How? You can say, be quiet. Simple, right? When you recognize your position, the position and authority that he's given you, when you know what it is, and you're the one who can access heaven, right? You can go be before the throne of grace to get what you need. No matter when, you can go boldly before the throne, right? Confidently. You can go, right? You can come in, right? That's what it says regarding us. So that's the born-again Christian. So when you understand this picture, so by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testament, you overcome, right? So you just got to use the blood of the Lamb. You just speak Jesus' name and you just testify, right? But so by logically, it's easy. But when these things happen, they suddenly happen, right? They just kind of unexpectedly happen, right? Suddenly. It doesn't warn you in advance, right? Oh, sometimes you might feel oh, something's about to happen. When your heart is developed, your heart is pure, then you can sense that something, oh, something's about to happen, so you can expect it. Oh, something's uncomfortable, something's kind of weird. But even that, unless you practice how to respond to God's word, but the truth, then it won't work out. So then, you know, sports players, right? Be like boxing before those who boxers before they go up to the ring they practice a lot right but then when they actually are in the match can they hear what the coach is saying no right they just fight as they practiced so in your situation and the word of god right right now that's what we're talking about so in 12 10 so there was a loud voice saying now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ have come right it's talking about victory who is this that's who we are. That's us. That's why to rejoice. We have to rejoice. So on one side, there's all these battles happening, but we can rejoice. So understand this picture. So this kind of knowledge, this kind of truth, and this kind of revelation, Satan doesn't want it to be imparted to you and engraved in you because when you know this, then everything, all the schemes of Satan, it becomes nothing, becomes useless, and they have to run away. They have to leave. Do you understand? So the, what do they use? They use the current. The dragon spews out water, right? So the current, the trend of this world. People's response, some kind of movement in this world or network. Mass media, they, Satan uses it to kind of just push you into it, right? Into the influence, like woke, being woke, or freedom. So it seems like, oh, it doesn't seem bad, but there's a trap there. So what you should do, you have to clearly know the truth, okay? So what is Satan's first bait to make you not know this truth or for you to not believe, right? Have unbelief and doubt. You have unbelief and doubt because when something happens, right? Some hardship happens, then, you know, you fear the Lord. You say, oh, I believe, but as soon as something hard happens or suffering comes, you forget, right? So who uses this scheme? Let's go to Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 11. There's a story here. 
Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. So it's interesting. So before the throne of God, there's the Son of God. There's pe you know, the people of God and there's also Satan. They're conversing with each other. But Satan's bragging about Job. I mean, sorry, God's bragging about Job. He's so righteous. He's blameless and upright man. So what does Satan accuse, right? Accuses Job, right? What does he say? So if God takes away what you give to took away what you gave to Job. So if kind of trouble, tribulation comes upon Job, do you think Job will still fear you? Fear the Lord? So Satan's tempting, right? But if you look at the Bible, God allows Satan to do it, right? But he said, don't touch his life, right? Don't kill him. So why does God allow it? So this continues with unbelief and doubt, but Satan through this, he wants Job to experience hardship so that he cannot believe and doubt God. But if you look at this story here, let's go to verse 5. For Job, for so it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would sin and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them off. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. Maybe. That is, maybe. That they may have. You know, he does fear the Lord. He does fear the Lord, but why does he fear the Lord? Does he fear the Lord because of awesome God or on one side? He's afraid. So he was he had the party party celebration, he gave thanks to God. Then with that joy he can just stay in there and then just grow up. But the one thing that Job lacked was this maybe spirit. But same thing might happen. You know, might this, might that. So that becomes unbelief and doubt. That becomes fear. That's why God allowed, you know, Satan. But then what Satan's attack failed, right? You know, Job lost everything in one day. So if you go to verse 21. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. Job chapter 1, verse 21 to 22. So Satan's trap failed. So then he goes into the second trap a little bit further. So now Job started to get sick. So first, there was a financial issue. And a second, you know, health issue. But God allowed it, and He just let Satan do it. But what did Job say at the end? You know, God taught this to Job. So Job didn't know. So without Job, without knowledge and without understanding, He said that He said as if He did know. But He said, Now I know and saw who God is. So I confess and repent of my sins. Right, That's Job's response. So the one who created the earth is God. And regarding everything that comes from God, 100%, because I didn't go to God, that's why these issues happen. That's what Job said. So God, through this kind of cycle, He restores it and makes it new again. So it's very simple. So when you know the truth and you experience it in your life, then the test is over. But if this doesn't work out, 
then it still remains as bait. There's still bait for Satan. So you might have blocked the hole. So you might be blocking the hole, but inside of you, you still have the smell. Then Satan will keep attacking you. Do you understand? So let's say you blame God in that situation. Then you gave the Satan the legal right. That's what Satan's aiming for. So the unbelief and doubt. So the second is fear. Because of fear. So first is unbelief and doubt. Second is fear. So regarding the work of the kingdom of God. So the tool that Satan uses the most is fear. So 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if you focus on what God hasn't given you, then you're going to fight 100 times and lose 100 times, right? So Satan likes the bait. The, the bait that Satan likes the most is fear. Everything starts from fear. If you have fear, then the relationship get cut, gets cut off. Cut off. If you have fear, the relationship gets cut off, right? So other thoughts come in, or you try to defend, or you try to you rationalize with your thinking rather than God, right? If you have fear. So when you don't have any way to protect yourself before you know the truth, Satan attacks you to plant this fear in you. Do you understand? So father rejection, it's all this, this fear, right? So because of this fear, you cannot do the work of God. So what is God doing? He wants to restore with this full love, right? Whole love. That's why Jesus sacrificed himself. So this whole, he gave his whole self to us, right? He gave everything to us. So when you agree and receive it, then this fear goes away. Okay? So, just because you encounter one time, it doesn't maintain the whole time. But it has to be engraved and grow up so that you can, you can maintain it. That's why you have to keep giving thanks continually. Always pray, right? That verse. So let's say you only breathe, you take one breath per day and you can survive. Let's say that's the case. If you think about it, then you don't, people are not going to think of oxygen as very precious, right? If you just need one breath per day, you're not going to think that oxygen is valuable. So this breath itself is this communion with God. You have, it symbolizes the relationship with God. So what he gave us is the breath of life. Do you understand? That's why until this grows up inside of us, these th until it develops, these things are going to keep happening. So you're going to exercise what you learned, right? Then you get the spiritual muscle. So you can start to defend and then go on the offense. You can attack in advance. If you just speak the truth before Satan can do anything. You sprinkle the blood of Jesus on your life. Then there's the boundary, right? There's a boundary that manifests. Do you remember the Passover? So on the leaf, right? The blood. So blood shed. So the blood that was coming out, shedding from the lamb, you sprinkle, by, you sprinkle the blood, right? That means you respond by faith. That itself makes the boundary. The protection comes. The enemy can come over that boundary. No. Even if there's the bait of sin inside, they can, Satan cannot come. Even if we have that anxiety, you know, if we use the blood, Satan cannot come in. This unstable area, Satan still cannot attack. So when you receive this, then the fear goes away. Do you understand? But if you don't accept this, and you accept things of the world, then just like Job did, so he's righteous but on one side he's still anxious he's like what if maybe what if they make a mistake maybe if they make a mistake so even if they make a mistake if he knew the grace that they can still live by grace even if they make a mistake then say then job wouldn't be worried about it but you know it's the old testament so they had to give this offering every day that's why jesus came so how precious jesus is to us he gave us this privilege to speak the name of Jesus. That's such an amazing thing. You have to believe it. That's love. So unless it's the Holy Spirit, you cannot confess that Jesus is the Lord. So even if you work hard, do you think you can speak the name of Jesus in the dangerous situations? No. Unless you're in the relationship, you clearly 
con when you clearly confess who Jesus is, then the Holy Spirit will move. So then you continuously say it, and no matter what mistake it is, no matter what kind of unclean thing, you know, bait still remains inside you. You can protect yourself, and in that situation, you can get rid of the bait, okay? So don't forget this picture, so fear. That's why in Judges, so Gideon was a coward. He was a coward, but God manifested and said, you're a mighty warrior, right? He changed his identity. Did Gideon believe from the beginning? No. He said, my tribe is a small tribe. What am I going to do with this small tribe? So that's why he tests God with the fleece, right? The sheep fleece. He said, let, let the dew only be on the fleece nowhere else, but then opposite, right? Let it only be on the ground and not the fleece. And give me a chance to worship God. That's why Jehovah Shalom comes. Suddenly the fire comes and then, you know, burns the altar, right? So Jehovah Shalom. So fear changed to peace. Okay? That's why he became Gideon, and then he became Gideon. But the enemy was attacking, so he called his army. He called his army, but what did God say? There's too many, too many people in the army. So who did he send away first? Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart, right? So in the kingdom of God, do you want to see the kingdom of God, and in, do you want to see and encounter the kingdom of God in your life? then you shouldn't have fear. Regarding eating and drinking, so fear and worry is similar, right? They're cousins. Worry, anxiety, all of that fear. Then you cannot do the work of the kingdom of God. So do not worry about what to drink or what shall we eat, right? Because that's all the things the Gentiles seek. So you're called Christian, but you're living how? You're living like a Gentile. If you really become free in this area, then you can eat even more abundantly. It's guaranteed. We, we experienced it today too. So when you do it in God's way, so among God's people, you give and receive and then you multiply the blessing together. But if you do it in the worldly way, then you don't want to give, right? It feels like a waste. As soon as you go into that kind of picture, the kingdom of God breaks. Then you become selfish, you have fear and worry. So do, don't, do not worry about your wealth of the world, right? You know what does Satan say? So do not worry about it. be anxious for nothing and just give it all to God, right? So therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So if you worry, who comes? Satan. So you have to understand this concept. So it's not about maybe, but it must be must. So there's no may in God's word, it's must. So you have to be clear in your yes and no. If because you're not clear with your yes or no, that's why you have fear, okay? So you have to trust in Him. Because of His name, you might be sacrificed because of his name when you risk you know yourself your life those who give their life for me those who lose their life for me will gain it those who try to gain it will lose it you know if it's not dead and then it just lives then it ends but if it dies and it comes to the ground then it'll bear more fruits right so understand God's principle so the way to get rid of fear is that all these worries about the world and the fear of the world you have to get rid of it so worrying In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, one more time, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God will keep your heart, right? And then you hear His voice. The solution comes. And to the widow, 
She only had the Zarephath widow, right? To Elijah. She only had this last meal, but then if she gave it to Elijah, she would have nothing to eat, but she gave it to Elijah anyways, right? Be according to the word of God. So she was planning to eat this and be full and just die with her son. Or she's going to die either way, right? Even if she eats it or not. So the picture here, this, she recognized this is God's person and then she just gave it to Elijah. Who responds? God's love will respond, right? And God's person will respond, right? And God pers God's person came when he came to the widow. There's the famine going on right now. But that means God has a message or a mission, right? For why he sent him there, right? So this is why you have to trust in God, okay? He told Elijah, go to Brook Cherith, right? There's not going to be any rain. There's going to be a famine. There's not going to be anything to eat, but I will provide for you. So it's very amazing. So Elijah is the one who experienced God providing for him, right? And then the angel himself came and gave uh, the things of heaven to Elijah, right? Don't you want to live that kind of life? The things of heaven, you just ate one thing, but he was able to endure and run for 40 days. So 40 days stamina ended with just one meal. He was able to eat one meal and endure for 40 days. Isn't that interesting? So when these things get activated, then the commercial system of this world will be shut down. So the things of the world, the ways of the world, if you focus on those, then automatically you're going to worry. So you have to be um, closer to the kingdom system. Then you have to experience God. You have to be closer to God to be able to understand it, okay? And another bait of Satan. So things you do habitually and you're easily deceived is lies. So Satan, uh, he's the father of lies, right? So let's go to John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no, no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. So all the words that come out in mass media, listen carefully. They try to emphasize one side and they're trying to hide a certain area. You think they're speaking the truth, but they're actually speaking a lie. So unless you have this insight, you'll be deceived. Do you understand? So inside of you, if you have a lot of idols inside of you, Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4 to 5, the more idols you have in your heart, I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols. So in easier terms, he's going to just tell you according to what you want to hear. So what are you going to think? Until, if you keep looking for the prophet, until you hear what you want to hear, that's just going to happen. He's going to answer according to the multitude of your idols. So you're going to think that God spoke to you, but actually it's a lie. So you have to clearly know where the source is. So it seems right, but where is the source? So based on what the source is, it can change. So the thoughts and emotions and all the sources that come inside of you, you have to start to discern it. So let's say more importantly, unless you discern the sources of this world, it's going to go where? It's going to lead to confusion. When you lie, the confusion comes, right? Especially regarding gender. They say there's another gender. You can keep developing the identity, all of that stuff, right? So it just all scatters, divides the minds of people. The confusion comes. So if that happens, then what starts to happen? Isaiah chapter 8, if you go to verse 19. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? So whisper and mutter. Those, those kind of like hallucinating voices. You hear these like hallucinations or... So it sounds like, oh, you miss it. You think God spoke to you. So that's the whisper and mutter muttering. So whisper and mutter. Mut mutter. So whisper 
and mutter. So you, there's people who hear hallucinations, right? So the people with schizophrenia, right? So that's what the psychologists say in here. But that means their spirit's been damaged. They're being controlled by the devil. You understand? If you keep doing this habitual thing, it's very dangerous. Because they're always living in this confusion and chaos. So then there's multiple persons inside of you, right? Another person inside of you that you don't even know about. Or sometimes you put the name to that kind of person inside of you so like these days these days like in the morning i feel like a woman and the night i feel like a man and because of their own sexual desires they're trying to co cover it up and do it in their own way so it's all lies so that's the times of sodom and gomorrah it's the same thing okay so if you clearly speak the truth then these things won't come so God created the heaven and earth as male and female right he didn't say that people can make their own gender it doesn't say that right? so God created it but people think that they can do it so that's the wrong concept so you have to clearly understand this so David regarding his identity he's like why am I living in this kind of suffering and hardship he kept crying out because he couldn't understand in Psalms 139 so David's confession comes out he said he doesn't like it so I run away here and there so even if I go to the mountain he's there even if I go to the ocean God is there even if I go into the ground God is there no matter where I go he's there even if I'm hiding God knows so there's no way for him to run away or escape from God so that's why when David was crying out, God spoke to him. Since you were in your mother's womb, I created you wonderfully and fearfully. He said, I created you. So it's not that your dad made a mistake and you have this hardship of without your mom. You don't have this protection. And your father thought of you as a shame and he didn't protect or guarantee you. So that's all the lies that people told him. Without God's permission, you know, even nothing can fall to the ground without God's permission, right? So regarding yourself, when you clearly recognize and know who Jesus is, then you can know who you are. That's like God told to David. Since you were in your mother's womb, since you were in the darkness, according to what was recorded in my book, I created you. Then my plan for you, look at this book. You're going to make this kind of mistake, you're going to make this mistake, but every time, how am I going to restore you? He said, how precious are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. But all those thoughts are so awesome and amazing. So I make this kind of mistake, but he never thought of me as that. You think you're not enough, but he doesn't think of you like that. He doesn't consider you like that. So then what's the bait you're giving to Satan? How do you treat yourself? How do you recognize, consider yourself? What do you think of yourself? Your standard is the issue. So what is that standard? Is it the worldly people, what they said? Is it what your parents said to you? Is it what your authority figure said to you? Is it what your friends told you, the people who used you? So it all changes, right? It's all the world. So Satan came to where? He came to the world. He deceived the whole world. So we're in the world, but we don't belong to this world. We belong to who? We belong to Jesus Christ. So your citizenship is not on earth, it's in heaven. Even Peter, he made a good confession, but then he got scolded after, right? He said, you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Okay? So it's what's simple, when you clearly recognize who Jesus is and you call his name every day and use what he has allowed you. So cover by the blood of Jesus, cleanse by the blood of Jesus, and speak his word, proclaim his word, proclaim his word. Then, no enemy in any form, even if the bait is inside of you, he cannot attack you. In his protection, he heals you. In his presence, he de deals with your inside.
Isn't that how you were healed? And Pastor Kim too, he was in the presence of God and suddenly all the things came out inside of him and he had deliverance. So in Pastor Kim's thinking, he thought he was a very passionate believer, just like Paul, right? He thought he, thought he was an extremely passionate believer, but every time he had a struggle. This is Pastor Kim's story, so, but he didn't know who he was. But he started to cry out to the Lord. The same verse, Psalms 139, God told him, so the speaker was speaking that word. So I heard that speaker's sermon in Korea, but I heard it again. But when I first heard it, I just received grace. But there was nothing else. But the second time I heard this sermon, because for a long time, my heart was breaking. I was My life was breaking. I was in a very urgent state. But as soon as that speaker spoke that truth, you know, my body started to shake and I had deliverance. So, so many things are saved inside of you, stored inside of you. So he started to deeply think about, you know, who we are. So not everything you see on the outside is everything. Okay, right? Those who live with in the spirit, those who have the fellowship with Jesus, those who, if you don't want to listen to the lie, if you don't want to listen to lies, then you shouldn't lie. You lie because you're afraid. You want to escape the situation first. Those who lie get easily deceived. Lies bear more lies. And those who lie, they get deceived and they deceive others. So if you lie, then your spirit gets confused. You cannot discern Satan's schemes. You, if you do what God tells you not to do, so you know the love of money is the root of evil, right? So even though Judas Iscariot was in the presence and love of Jesus, but he wasn't looking at Jesus, right? He wanted money. So then Satan developed us, uh, and then Satan put in the thought to betray Jesus into Judas, right? And it built up the house inside of Judas. And then Satan then can control your life, right? If he built, builds it up inside of you. And then Satan entered him, right, Judas? So in our heart, our, the war is in our heart because there's a Holy Spirit that wants to build the house of God inside of you. And Satan wants to find any gap to build his own house. The robber keeps coming in, right, Satan? Okay. So as long as you can discern that and you speak the truth, then your life will change. Learn how to live honestly. If you speak, you might speak the truth and you might suffer a loss. But God cannot lie. He speaks the truth and He never changes. So when you choose to do the same thing, then you feel like, oh, I'm going to lose something. I'm going to be at a loss. But in a completely different scenario, His kingdom will come upon you. So your kingdom come and your will be done on you as it is in heaven. So the great reversal scenario will be written. There's many people who experience that. When you choose to live honestly, truthfully, your life will become clear. When you see it, look at your own life. Are you the style to easily waver or are you clear that you don't change? You don't waver. Those who waver, when you ride the Viking, when you go at the highest point, that's the scariest point, right? And when you come down, it's okay. So then based on where you focus, you might deceive yourself saying, oh yeah, I'm okay. Depending on where you're focusing on. But God, it doesn't work for God like that. So David confessed, no matter where I go, God, you know my heart. I cannot hide from you. You rule and reign over me. You're omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. So trusting in him is the best. He didn't watch over you to punish you, to give you a hard time. He wants you to stand firm in the truth. So that's why through Jesus Christ, He wants to give you what He wants to give you. So in order for that, when you don't know this area that's already been defiled, it needs to be cleaned up. 
That's why he's waiting for you to acknowledge that. When you confess with your mouth, right? So whoever confesses me before men, he will confess before who? He, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven, right? Before the angels, before the throne of God. It's a very important word. If you confess Jesus in front of people, then in front of the throne of God, no matter what you did, I will confess you, right? Who? The Advocator. Our Advocator, so the blood of Jesus, will guarantee us, protect us. So you have to understand this. You have to proclaim. It's very important. You have to proclaim. Who do you con who do you say that I am? You have to confess. So in silence, you just do it in silence. There's you don't need that. So publicly, you have to proclaim. When you boldly proclaim, then this sound will cover you. Okay. So you have to proclaim and speak. And when you speak and you believe, then it'll happen. There's another important thing. So those who have anger problems, Ephesians 4, 26 to 27 says, Be angry and do not sin. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So anger. So then anger. It got, God created anger. Right? So you can be angry. You can respond. But if you hold on to that anger, it becomes poison. If you hold on to it, you become a bait for Satan. Even Jesus got angry, but even though he got angry, he didn't hate them. He did scold them. He saw what was wrong. If you see something wrong and you don't get angry, then that means you're, you're just com comforting them. So you say, it's okay if you do that. So you have to understand your motive and spirit. You understand? That's why you might have false humility. So false humility. On the outside, you seem humble, but in reality, inside of you, you have selfish ambition. Selfish ambition and greed. You understand? So when those things are exposed, then the anger comes out. So the religious spirit, those who have strong religious spirit, the anger comes out. They couldn't do it, but the little child came and are able to do it. The diseases are, diseases are being healed and everything they see. So that's why the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were indignant. They were very indignant. Envious jealousy. Why? So I was. I had a lot of unexpected anger in me when God wanted to deal with it. So I was rejected from the mother's womb. So when I saw injustice, I couldn't stay still. So usually I'm shy and I stay still. But then when I suddenly get angry, if I get angry, then people are afraid when I get angry. Because I usually don't get angry. So that's why I thought that was a good thing. I was stubborn and got angry. And I did it till the end. But in reality, the source was rejection. The source wasn't something good. Back then I didn't know. I just covered myself with that disguise myself with that but to do the work of the kingdom of God God had to deal with this issue that's why he's kept triggering me for the anger to keep coming out either my name was written wrong only my name was written wrong and in America you know the last names are the same for those who are married right? but Korea is different that's why they wrote a different wife as my wife at YM on the label Another person's wife was last name was Kim, so that lady became my wife, and then you know Samuel's last name is Park, Park. So then it got mixed up. So, so I was saying I can endure this, but at the end, I kept getting tricked. People kept trying to triggering me, and then I exploded. So God was dealing with this issue, but at the right time He came upon me. So this hidden things inside of me, He broke it. The stronghold. The lie, the de deception regarding yourself. So God created you fearfully and wonderfully. So God, I understood God's calling for me and what God wanted to give me. I was able to understand that. So I was no longer deceived by this lie. Okay. So hatred and anger. Unforgiveness. So Satan really likes it. Envious and jealous, envy and jealousy. So Second Corinthians, chapter two, verse seven to eleven. 
so you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him or he may be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow so i beg you to reaffirm your love for him for this is why i wrote that i might test you and know whether you are obedient in everything anyone whom you forgive i also forgive indeed what i have forgiven if i have forgiven anything has been for your sake in the presence of christ so that we will not be outwitted by satan for we are not ignorant of his designs so it's a very important principle so even though they, whenever you teach someone but they keep doing it over and over you get irritated right there's no one that doesn't get irritated you tell them this don't do this you teach them but they keep doing it then you get irritated right but there's something you have to learn so i went to a nursing home and those elderly people to the people i couldn't really c c communicate with well I saw people who were still serving those people very well. They say everything they want to say, but they don't hate them. They say everything they want to say. They help them. So the, the grandma's there, they love it. They know what that person is saying to them, but they can tell if that person's saying it out of hatred or not. But what does it say here? You know, this church kept doing sexual morality, all of these issues, so, you know, Paul kind of scolded them, disciplined them. But Paul has this kind of heart. He's, so he was, they were probably afraid, right? Trembling. They were afraid that um, they would be judged or criticized by Paul. That's so why he said reaffirm. It's better to reaffirm the, their love, right? The love. Because if you're in that. Um, this issue they cannot deal with if they cannot deal with it then they cause something worse to happen that's what satan was aiming for this impulse so then do what so that's why you have to forgive you have to learn to forgive so no matter what mistake they did no matter what how they triggered you if you have shalom in your heart if you have peace comfort then you can endure no matter what they do but it's very interesting for this is why I wrote that I might test you and know whether you're obedient in everything so that's why what is the new co co commandment I give you the new commandment love one another so Ephesus Church, the ministry was very good, but they lost their first love. Said, I will quickly and remove your lampstand. But if you restore your first love, I'll let you eat from the tree of life. So when you restore the first love, you'll eat the fruit of the tree of life. So then the resurrection power will come. All the issues will change to life, sickness, anything. So that I'm going towards that, right? Wanting this right now. So restoring this first love in what state you know go back to how, how did i enter this relationship with god because after a long time you forget but you keep saying it over and over again you keep giving thanks and you express it again and you ask him to fill it up again and you encounter again you can have this more deeper level of relationship keep saying it to god so when you see from far away and up close it's different then when you go more closer and you worship the present just comes and your heart just changes the prayer that you don't even know comes out starts to come out so that's not you he's ruling over and reigning over right so so the forgiveness and love you're dealing with this unforgiveness you deal with this hatred you deal with this anger so that this is the key to forgive including yourself forgive yourself including everything when you start to acknowledge that God loves you and forgave you then you can forgive but if you don't forgive and you hold on to it what does it say in Matthew 18 you'll be tortured by the devil until you what until you forgive so your life if you look at it carefully if you don't forgive others then who's making the mistake in your standard you say that, that person made the mistake but who's getting the hurt, the wound? So you said, that person is the one who did wrong, but they're living okay. They're fine. Nothing's bothering them. But just you're suffering. You're having the hardship. Do you know why? Do you know what the difference is? There's many people complain, right, about that. 
They get angry at those who are doing evil or living okay. They're living a good life. So do you know what the difference is? God only tests the righteous. Only those who have a relationship with God, He deals with them and levels you up. Those who don't have relationship, He just lets them be. Just live in that state, and if it ends, then it ends. What kind of life do you want? In your life, you know, God keep dealing with me so that when I meet you, when I encounter you, would it be better for you to dwell in glory or would you rather be stuck on the stuck, stuck, stuck somewhere? What do you want? So your eyes have to be opened. That's the first love. That's why no matter what happens, so forgiveness, you're doing it for yourself. So for me, give. When you release that person, then even your issues will be released. Will be, so it's a bonus. Sometimes you don't even know what your sin is. But when you forgive others, even the things that you don't know about, God is going to forgive you and just release everything, okay? So James chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. The wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So, let's say you got a benefit, you dealt with some kind of issue. That's what people think. But it's earthly, sensual, demonic. Because in the end, it's a lie. And it's envy, jealousy. In the end, it's destruction. And in the end, it's you know, per you're going to perish. So the wisdom from God is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. We get easily deceived. So many people, uh, they did some kind of wrong. And then they left church, and if they don't have any issues in their life, they think, I'm okay. But that's not the case. So it says this in the Bible, in Hosea. So the time of judgment is decided by God. So in our thinking, just do it right away. So that person can know so that I can be comfortable. That's your heart. But try to apply that to yourself. Do you think you're going to be okay as soon as that happens? No. You might be worse. Right? God might ask you for more things because you knew more things, you experienced more things, but you still did it. So to the one that learned more will be disciplined even more and the one who's been responsible for more, right? That's what it says in the Bible. So pick God's picture. God wants everyone to repent and come to salvation. Then someone has to show the goodness of God. Someone has to manifest God's never-ending love so that they could, when you help someone be saved from their sin, then you will be set free and you go into the glory. The same glory that Jesus had, the same love that Jesus received, you can have the same and that you can give it away to. You can share with others. When that happens, Satan can no longer even come near you. So when you go, the atmosphere will change. The situation will change. The, pro the issue will change. So when that sign starts to manifest, when God's presence starts to come, then you're all going to welcome it. Why? Because as long as you're just walking around, even though you're shadow, then everyone will be healed. You don't even have to lay hands, just your shadow, right? So, even laying hands is tiring, your arms sore. The speaker on Saturday was talking about, you know, the smell of your mouth. So it's actually kind of, it's very hard. But you don't need to. When you know who you are, you just stare, then you're, everything around you will change. And no matter where you go, they will welcome you. When you shine the light, then the glory will come. So from everywhere, they're going to gather to you. Why? Because the light of this glory, they want to experience it as well. So, so we were called with this purpose. Do you want to live the successful life? 
Of, do you want to live the successful life of the world or the prosperous life? Do you want to, you want to live the life with a purpose and goal? Successful life? That's your own thinking, your own definition of what successful is, but then the life that has a purpose. Which life do you want to live? It's your choice. So you decide. As soon as you connect to God, His plan will be start to download. Download it to you. His love, His grace, and everything will start to cover you. Let your eyes be open. Let your ears be opened. Let your heart be widened. Let you see a different realm. That picture to you and me, let it be upon us both. So I bless you in Jesus' name. So especially in the end time, in this glory, you lead many people to Jesus. So together you enjoy the Feast of Tabernacle to dwell with Him. You participate in this. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.